Hello everyone, Mr. Porter here. I hope you're doing as well as I'm doing. Uh, of course, uh, this is Friday. Uh, uh, obviously, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, videoing, videoing this on Friday, uh, but, uh, but I prepared this in advance so that uh, we will have some continuity in our class uh, and uh, we will uh, 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 go through everything uh, in a, I guess you could say, a similar manner uh, throughout uh, Unit 2. You know, Unit 1 was kind of crazy because, uh, because I was sick, and that really threw things kind of, uh, I guess, skewampus. But, uh, but we're taking care of that uh, for my absence uh, today uh, in uh, having this video. And uh, we're going to go over the vocabulary here, and the vocabulary for this has to do not only with the Constitution itself, but also with uh, the the assertion of the Supreme Court uh, as a, as an entity that will uh, that will um, uh, essentially be what what the framers wanted it to be. And that was uh, a, an entity which interpreted the law. And, and it, you know, John Marshall, uh, John Marshall actually uh, was the uh, chief justice who did this. Um, and uh, he, was, he, was the, uh, he was the fourth chief justice of the Supreme Court. But I think uh, even more importantly, he set himself up to be uh, very important uh, for the court. And prior to the court, prior, prior to being the Chief Justice, he was actually the, the acting or interim uh, Secretary of State uh, for John Adams. And, uh, and that's a whole, other, uh, a whole other thing. And we'll, we'll talk about uh, the, the ramifications of something that he didn't do uh, just a minute when we talk about a certain a certain case, uh, but uh, uh, the certain that certain case really and, and just to let you know he was he was chief justice of the Supreme Court for thirty five years. It was until his death in eighteen thirty five that uh, that he served and uh, and so um, a long time. Uh, chief justices usually don't serve that long and. Uh, he was one of the longest. Um, but uh, Marbury v. Madison, and I'm getting a, ahead of myself here uh, because it's the, the fourth item down the line. Uh, very, very important uh, case, and we'll talk about that. There were some other landmark cases which we will mention as well. Um, but but he, uh, he began the principle known as judicial review, and we will talk a little bit more about that, uh, which really shaped uh, the judicial branch into a very powerful force uh, in the federal government. In fact, uh, one of the cases actually uh, gave the federal government more power than a lot of people thought that they should have. Now, William Marbury, uh, and let's let's go down for a, just a moment down to Marbury v. Madison. Uh, as, as I had mentioned, uh, John Marshall uh, was the interim Secretary of State. And uh, at the end of uh, John Adams' term, uh, you know, he had been uh, defeated in the presidential election. Um, and uh, the Democratic Republicans pretty much swept out a lot of the Federalists. And so John Adams wanted to have I guess, a presence anyway of Federalists still, at least on the courts or in the courts. And so he appointed a bunch of judges and they were referred to as midnight judges. And William Marbury was one of these. Okay, at the very end, I mean the last couple of days or so. And uh, uh, John Marshall thought, Oh, give me a break. It would take a day to ride out to him uh, and a day to ride back. 
Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to waste my time with that. There's only a couple of days left in the, in the, uh, uh, in the administration, so I'm, I'm just not even going to worry about it. I'll let, I'll let the, next, uh, the next Secretary of State worry about it. Um, the next Secretary of State was none other than James Madison. Uh, he was the Secretary of State for, uh, for Thomas Jefferson. Uh, and he found all of these, uh, all of these, uh, these commissions that had to be presented to the new judges for them. I mean, they'd been, they had been uh, uh, okayed by the, the Senate and signed off on by President Adams, but they have to receive this, this letter, this what is referred to as a commission, before they could become a judge. Well, uh, Madison found all of these that had not been delivered uh, by, uh, by our good friend John Marshall. And he asked, he, he asked President, President Jefferson, what? He said, yeah, don't, don't do anything. I'm actually appointing other people to take care of that. So, so Madison didn't do anything about it. William Marbury uh, was livid. Uh, he was mad. Extremely irritated, uh, and so he he uh, he took a. Uh, I mean, he he appealed right to the Supreme Court. Didn't go through any other courts. He just appealed to the Supreme Court, and uh, he uh, with a writ of mandamus. In other words, he wanted them to give him his job. Uh, well, we will be watching a video. Uh, uh, a little bit later uh, that you will have available to you. It, it will be on Schoology. Uh, go ahead and watch the video in class uh, so that, uh, you know, it'll be uh, just like how we did uh, B, uh, B Washington, where you were listening, everybody was listening to, uh, uh, to those things. And so it's not going to be an interruption. Uh, just go ahead and do that. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, Long story short, uh, Marshall uh, gave the opinion uh, for the court saying that the Supreme Court did not have the power to, to over, I guess, overrule um, or give him his job or force, um, force Madison to, to give him the commit, give Marbury the commission. And essentially what it was, was that uh, uh, they ruled that the Judiciary Act of 1789 gave, gave the Supreme Court powers that were not mentioned in the Constitution. And so uh, they ruled that the, the, the Judiciary Act of 1789 was null and void. It was unconstitutional. Therefore, it does not... Uh, it... it uh, <laughs> Not uh, not uh, available to be used, and in fact, uh, Congress since in 1803, when the decision came down, they had to go back and they had to uh, retrace their steps and figure out what they did wrong and and right that wrong, and so they created another Judiciary Act in 1803. Uh, but with the Marshall Court, of course, 35 years long, uh, not only um, actually 34 years is how long. Uh, the Marshall Court lasted uh, from 1801 to, uh, to 1835. Um, longest uh, for any Chief Justice, really, uh, pre presided over, get this, over a thousand decisions. And he himself wrote 500 opinions, over 500 opinions. And of course, uh, he died a couple of days after, uh, after Independence Day in 1835. And uh, uh, his his effect on on the court and the power of the federal government uh, will never be diminished. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, this uh, judicial this 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 uh, uh, idea of judicial review that really came about because of Marbury v. Madison, and of course during the years following that, 
<clears throat> excuse me, during the years following that, uh, that was expounded uh, or expanded upon um, and, and was uh, essentially, uh, shall we say, it was, uh, uh, it was made uh, in greater detail uh, from, from a, a legal standpoint anyway. Uh, you had these other certain cases like Gibbons v. Ogden. Um, uh, there was a, a problem as essentially with, with what was happening on the Erie Canal that uh, the state of New York was uh, infringing on Congress's right uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, regulate commerce among the states uh, uh, you know, because of the Erie Canal. Uh, and uh, and so the so Gibbons v. Ogden was essentially a slap on the wrist of of uh, the state of New York. Uh, Dartmouth v. Woodard uh, was another one. It had to do with Dartmouth College, uh, and the state of uh, of New Hampshire tried to make Dartmouth College public uh, and essentially overrule the board of trustees. and And what it ended up being was a huge contract dispute. Uh, and it was a, a case in contract law, really, uh, because they had a they had a contract with the state of New Hampshire that Dartmouth College would be private, and uh, you know, New Hampshire tried to make it public, and and the uh, uh, the Supreme Court said, hey, don't do that, uh, <laughs> don't do that, and they slapped New Hampshire's wrist, said uh, Dartmouth is a private college, it's not a public one. You have no business interfering uh, with the contract that, that they have uh, with the state of New Hampshire. Uh, McCulloch v. Maryland, another huge case. Uh, the state of Maryland was taxing uh, the second bank of the United States. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they were uh, essentially uh, taken to federal court. And it got to the Supreme Court. And the state of Maryland essentially was... Uh, was uh, messing around with uh, one of Congress's implied powers, uh, and that's uh, uh, you know through the necessary and proper clause. Uh, there were a few other things that came about because of McCulloch v. Maryland as well. Was the supremacy clause was really pushed and pushed in a major way, uh, and and this decision uh, essentially told the state of Maryland that. You know, you can't mess around and, and, uh, and try to tax a federal entity, which the, the National Bank was. And they told them the, the Constitution of the, Supreme, of the Supreme Court, Constitution of the United States, as well as the laws of the United States, are superior and supreme. Something that we saw before, right, uh, when we did those quizzes on the Promethean Board. Uh, uh, supreme and uh, superior to the laws and the constitutions of the states. And this was pushed in a major way in McCulloch v. Maryland. Uh, so there were a lot of things that came out of that one. Uh, there was a huge expansion of federal power uh, because of the judicial branch. Uh, and of course, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the midnight judges uh, and, uh, and how those were were, they tried to carry those out, and uh, of course they met. Uh, they they met an untimely uh, an un untimely doom um, uh, because of uh, that one uh, Mr. Marbury who was irate that he did not receive his commission. Anyway, uh, there is, like I said, there is a uh, a video for you to watch regarding. Um, uh, uh, Marbury v. Madison. I forgot the case there for a minute. I was going to say McCulloch v. Maryland, but it's Marbury v. Madison. Uh, very, very good one. Uh, and uh, they essentially enumerate uh, the three the three items that that the court decides and. And, uh, and it's very, very well done. It's done by the History Channel. And it only lasts about three or four minutes. Uh, but uh, what I would like for you to do as well, the, the activity that we have, 
uh, has to do uh, with, uh, uh, with, with uh, doing a, an assignment on line paper. And uh, this is on, uh, it is on uh, Schoology, uh, and you'll see that assignment there, and it should be done on line paper and turned in. So uh, if you look, uh, there are four questions that need to be answered. Four questions that need to be answered. Um, the first one is, how does Article 3 of the Constitution describe the role of the Supreme Court? Uh, the second one, how does Article 3 infer or state that the Supreme Court is responsible for determining if laws are constitutional or not? Uh, number three, is judicial review referenced in the Constitution, specifically in Article 3, and does the court have any limitations placed on it in Article 3? And you need to answer uh, those, uh, those items. Uh, what, what I want for you to do is to make a T-chart. And uh, this is one of those what we think we know, what we learned type of thing. And what I want for you to do on the left side of the T-chart, on one side of that line paper, uh, what you think you know. In other words, I want you to try to answer these before looking them up. Don't look them up, okay? Answer those four questions on the left side, or try to anyway. Then I want you to look up Article 3 uh, in the Constitution. Very easily done, just look up um, uh, National Archives and go to the Constitution. And Article 3 should be right there. Um, and, uh, and also, I want you to look up Hamilton's Federalist Number 78, Federalist Papers Number 78. Uh, that should help you answer those questions as well. Okay? And uh, then uh, that will be what you learned. Okay? And it will be those four questions on what we learned. Okay, so go ahead and do those. And if you guys want to work together, that's fine. Uh, if you want to work together, maybe, uh, it, you know, uh, you're one of your uh, shoulder buddies, or if you want to do it in your groups, you know, in, in your pods, that'd be fine too, but everybody has to turn in a paper. Okay, then I would like for you to go to the link uh, that is on there, and it, this is a further uh, a further look at, uh, at uh, John Marshall, Judicial Review, Marbury v. Madison, that sort of thing. What I would like for you to do is to go down, is to scroll down and to where it says Lesson Activities. Do Activity 1 and answer those four questions on the back of the page. Okay? All of that should take you, uh, you know, watching this video, Watching, uh, watching the other video, uh, and doing this work, it should take you through th through the block. Okay, so uh, anyway, we uh, look forward to seeing you uh, on Monday, uh, ready to go for uh, Unit Two Point Seven, and uh, looking forward to that. And uh, we will uh, see you guys then. You guys take care. Bye bye.